Bangkok, the Venice of the East, the capital city of Thailand. Its long full name, k r u n g t h e p Mahanakorn Amon Ratanakosin Mahintara y u t h y a Mahadilok Pop Nopara Rajatani Buri Rom Udom Rajani Wed Mahasatan Amon Piman Awatan Satit Sakakatiya Wisanu Kamprasit reflects its long standing culture. From the beginning of the Ratanakosin era, over 200 years ago until now, Bangkok has undergone a transformation of modernization. Still retaining its core values. From its busy streets to its ornate temples, this city is truly one of a kind. Welcome to the views of Bangkok. My name is Nol n e m a n p i p a k Ever since I was young, I have always had a passion for capturing significant moments of my life through video. Anywhere I went, I would always have a camera with me. But now, I will take on a greater challenge: to capture Thai lifestyles in Bangkok and to display them in a beautifully shot and edited documentary. In this documentary, I will bring you to the defining landmarks of Bangkok, both ancient and modern, to meet the people and see the city from a native perspective. We will start off in Wat Po, a first-grade royal monastery which dates back to the reign of King Rama I, the first king of the Ratanakosin era. The temple itself, located south of the Grand Palace, was originally restored by the king in 1788. According to an old stone inscription, many more restorations to the temple followed. The defining features of the temple can include the large reclining Buddha image, which is one of the largest in Thailand. The large terracotta pagodas. The main chapel where we see Buddhists, both Thai and foreign. Paying respects to the Buddha image, or the Chinese stone warriors who guard the temple gates and also reflect the Chinese influence on Thai trade back in the ancient days. However, if we look onto the small parts of the temple, we find our first insight into ancient and modern Thai lifestyles. The Rusi d a t t o n statues or management of the hermit shows the exercise of contortion, or as we know it today, massaging. Now these statues here represent past Thai massage traditions, and in fact, inside the temple they have a shop where visitors can experience the massage techniques for themselves. Next, we arrive at the Temple of the Emerald Buddha. Inside the Grand Palace of Thailand, the Grand Palace itself is separated into two sections: the temple, where visitors can pay respects to a green Buddha image, referred to as the Emerald Buddha. Then they can visit the inner palace itself. The temple, Wat Prasi Ratana s a s a d a r a m features grand halls and ornate pagodas. The temple was built in 1785 during the reign of King Rama I. However, unlike most temples in Thailand, The temple of the Emerald Buddha doesn't actually house any monks, but instead contains several sacred artifacts. For example, the Emerald Buddha image itself, 
which despite the name, isn't actually made from emerald, but rather from jade. The legends surrounding the Buddha image speak of many origins, however it is believed that the creation of the Buddha image dates back to 43 BC. The buildings within the temple have walls made out of crystal and glass, and are highly detailed as well, with various statues of Garuda surrounding the ordination hall. So here we are in the middle of the Grand Palace, uh, which is also the Temple of the Emerald Buddha, which is behind me. And as you can see, all the buildings around us are very intricate and they have very nice patterns, like if you see here, this building. But that one right behind me, there's lots of very detailed patterns. Scattered around the temple are also statues of giants from the story Ramakian or Ramayana, such as Tosakan, the king of giants. Finally, around the temple walls are murals of the story of Ramakian. The most popular scene being the one where there is a drawing of the monkey god Hanuman eating an entire city. Next, the Grand Palace. In Thailand, the royal family is revered and loved by all and many pay their respects to the kings present and past. Within the palace, there is the Jakri Mahaprasad Throne Hall and Dusit Mahaprasad Hall, which all hold cultural significance to Thais and are used in grand events such as the recent coronation of King Rama X. Before we move on to the more modern aspects of Bangkok, there is something I would like to note. As Buddhism is the national religion of Thailand, many in Bangkok visit places to pay respects to Buddha, monks, or other sacred figures. So, located in the heart of Bangkok is the Erawan Shrine, a place where many Buddhists and people of other religions gather in the city to give flower offerings to the statue of Brahma, a Hindu god who also holds cultural significance to Thai Buddhists. This just shows the extensiveness of the religious lifestyle aspect of Bangkok, where people stop their busy daily routines to pay respect and reflect back upon the long-standing Thai values. Another important aspect of life in Bangkok is the river life, as you can see behind me. Moving on from religious and cultural beliefs of people in Bangkok, we can now explore how people actually live their lives both past and present. One very important feature of Bangkok is its proximity to water sources. For example, the Chao Phraya River, Thailand's main river. This has been advantageous both in past and present, because in the past, the river was used as a major waterway to transport people and goods from international sources to the capital of Bangkok. It was also used by people as their main source of water to use, such as laundry, showering, or even playing in the river for children. Today, it is still used as a means of transport by many, as there are multiple boat services, such as Liodon Chao Phraya, along the river. However, due to increased use and pollution, the river is not really used by locals anymore. However, that hasn't stopped development along the river, as more and more people who live in Bangkok flock to get riverside views of Thailand's main river. This riverside lifestyle just shows how important the river is to people in Bangkok, because in the dry concrete jungle, it is a nice place to visit when people feel overwhelmed by the city sights. Now, before I show you anything else, this video cannot be about Bangkok unless I mention two nearly iconic societal issues. One, the sweltering heat. Since Bangkok lays dead center of Thailand, the climate is tropical and could range anywhere from as much as 40 degrees Celsius in the summer and 20 degrees Celsius in the winter. However, for most of the year, the temperature is above 30 degrees all day, which on average is hotter than many countries above or below the tropics of the world. Next, the demoralizing traffic. Bangkok is also well known for its hour-long traffic jams, which is a commuter's nightmare. 
Usually the traffic could cost a road commuter 30 minutes to one hour on a typical 10 kilometer trip in the city, but they could reach as bad as three to five hours in the same distance of 10 kilometers. However, there is a solution which people in Bangkok rely on, which is the widespread public transportation which is available. Now we're gonna move on to the public transportation. So we're gonna take this train right here over to the Victory Monument. Alright, so here we are in the middle of the city right now. As you can see, there's quite a bit of traffic. And that's exactly why people prefer to use public transport here. Because it's so convenient. And just look at down there. You just see all of those cars just lined up and it's really just a disaster zone for traffic in Bangkok. Now, escaping the heat and traffic pollution, we can move on into the more luxurious aspects of living in Thailand and Bangkok, which is spending time in shopping malls. To say that shopping malls are widespread in Bangkok would still be an understatement, because for people living in Bangkok, malls are one easy way to escape the heat. Within these malls are many different stores, restaurants, and venues, where people can access all sorts of goods. However, they also represent the modern social gathering place where friends and colleagues alike can meet each other or collaborate. This reveals a modern Thai lifestyle, where people prefer to meet others outside of the workplace in modern venues such as malls, instead of outside or in a workplace directly. An example of a popular mall in Bangkok is Siam Paragon, a very large luxury mall where tourists and locals go for travel, co-working, relaxing, food, and more. Not all of Bangkok's shopping destinations are in luxury malls though, as another major source of buying and selling goods are in traditional markets such as Chachuchak Weekend Market, which is one of the largest open-air markets in the world. Built in 1987, the market is an icon for the large-scale distribution of goods in Thailand. In Chachuchak, there are a wide range of commodities on sale. Food, souvenirs, clothing, and even live animals. That's right. You can find live animals, both ordinary and strange, such as dogs, cats, birds, and snakes. Above the surface, Chachachak nearly seems like another ordinary place where people go to shop. However, deep down, markets hold a significant place in the Bangkok lifestyle. People come here to buy things that they need for cheap and negotiable prices, which is perfect for the Thai lower and middle classes who do not have the time or money to visit expensive luxury malls. However, for the vendors, they work in the market to gain what little profit they can. As there are thousands of individual stalls, competition becomes natural, and you really do get a unique experience just walking down the narrow alleyways in the market. So right now, uh, as you can see, we're in the middle of the street. There's a whole lot of stores here, like there's clothes stores, food stores, and whatever else stores, massage stores. As you can see, all around us, there's just a whole lot of people, a whole lot of stores. And branching out from the main street here is more smaller alleyways, as you can see, which just stretches as far as you can see. And there's plenty more of these, but we're just in one of like hundreds of these small alleyways, which have lots of things in them. So now that we've covered all of Bangkok's fast, active, and exhilarating lifestyles, let us take a moment to slow down. Here we arrive at Lumpini Park, a patch of green in the middle of Bangkok. Created in 1925, the park has since been a calm gathering place for picnics, exercise, and other activities. It totals 142 acres of land, the same size as 107 football fields. This park is an example of a usually overlooked side of Thailand, which is the more calm and peaceful side, where people enjoy their time in slowing down from their activities in the hectic city, and where people of all ages gather to do the activities that they enjoy, whether it be yoga or lifting weights. There is a place for doing so in Lumpini Park.
Not all things in Bangkok are breathtaking and beautiful though, as there is a major threat to the health and well-being of citizens in Bangkok, that is, the toxic PM2.5 air pollution. PM2.5 refers to the particulate matter or polluting particles with a diameter of 2.5 micrometers or less. In Bangkok, the smog can be traced to four main sources, cars, power plants, construction sites, and crop burning in the rural areas. With long-term exposure to this type of pollution, it could lead to detrimental health effects, for example, heart and lung disease, and even premature death in extreme cases. Overall, this problem is the most impactful to the daily lifestyles of people in Bangkok because it limits outdoor activity and makes interactions very difficult. So I will present some ways to hopefully reduce the amount of pollution currently in Bangkok. 1. Simply turn off your light when you don't need it. That reduces the need for excessive power generation by power plants. 2. Take public transportation. The transport system in Bangkok is quite efficient, and mass commuting is an easy way to take cars off of roads. 3. Report any burning crops to highway officials if you are driving past a burning area in rural Bangkok or nearby provinces, which usually could be quite common. By taking these steps, we can all assure that we are keeping ourselves and the people around us safe from the threat of PM2.5. Bangkok is a beautiful city and truly one of a kind. However, our modern society is becoming increasingly threatened by our own actions. But together, we can stand to fight against those threats to keep the city grand. There's not a lot of places you can go in this world where the people you meet are as friendly as in Bangkok. The joy and smells from everyone you meet will really make your day. So in the end, I thank you all for joining me on this journey to explore the views of Bangkok.